Big news in one of the world's most important commodities, oil, as Saudi Arabia makes surprise cuts. I'm going to talk about that. We're going to look at what's happening globally. Something big has happened between the US and Saudi Arabia. I'm going to look globally as we move towards other countries that have had disruptions in oil. There is a lot to talk about and it affects everybody no matter where they are. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. I wanted to begin by looking at this. Saudis, other oil giants announce surprise production cuts. That connects in with oil prices soaring after Saudi Arabia leads coordinated OPEC plus cuts totaling more than a million barrels a day. Well, we've seen production increases and cuts that happen and they do affect the price of oil. And certainly this did affect price of oil. A lot of this has come around the time in which the economy is kind of you know, a little bit tipsy, doesn't know which side it's going to be on because certain areas are looking positive and a lot of other areas are not looking so great. We're talking about China. The growth is going to be led from there and maybe it's going to be, you know, coming from Asia in general. And then you also look at these other aspects and it's saying, well, you got a banking crisis going on. You got a global recession happening. Inflation is too high. All these things. But right here and now they cut production prices are at least temporary elevated, uh, temporarily elevated as a result. That connects in with this. Um, okay, Saudi Arabia cut their uh, production combined with an additional reduction pledges from Russia at all May uh, reduction at least on paper will exceed 1.65 million barrels per day on top of the two announced back in October. And so you could see that here just comparing on the chart oil production in the United States had risen dramatically uh, since the financial crisis essentially going up uh, you know shale has become something that you know was really starting to become much more popular during this period of time a lot of new companies popping up a lot of expansion with fracking and that had led to the United States becoming such an important producer of oil so you could see that oil production Russia as well as Saudi Arabia. So all those are on this chart if you wanted to see just comparing the two. And also I'd like to see how things have changed. Okay, so if we take it over the past 30 years, okay, it's going to look one way. But just over the last 10 years, things have changed quite a bit. Saudis take 100% control of America's largest oil refinery. Now, this could be very worrisome when you give up important infrastructure. And uh, when you look at this, you know, you got to have to start thinking to yourself, what does a country want to give up? Of course, you can have foreigner, foreign companies that come in, they buy, let's just say, residential real estate. They could take ownership in particular companies. They could own shares of companies that are available on the stock market. They could have roads and bridges and farmland but it's a certain gets to a certain point where some would consider that certain actions are too far and shouldn't be allowed and i want you to you know really talk about that in the comment section because i know for instance with china a lot of people are concerned about the purchase of farmland especially when it happens to be next to like military sites in the united states is that the same thing here? Or are Saudi Arabia and the United States BFFs and there's nothing to be concerned about? This is the largest oil refinery. So you've got to think it's an important piece of the total puzzle. And now you have a foreign government, foreign company that is going to operate it entirely. It's not a percentage. Here they have 100% control. So I want to know what you think about that. I thought it was really important to mention right here. U.S. power plant firm goes bankrupt after winter storm penalties. Owner of the power plants was already facing liquidity constraints. And you just see this. Look, they go out, big storm takes them out, and suddenly they can't pay their debt. Do you see how debt punishes not just individuals, but companies? And that same debt is rising higher and higher in the ability to service it. You see, all of these things because of interest rates, something I talk about all the time. It could affect SVB, Silicon Valley Bank, or 
in some cases with some additional factors here could affect a power company. How new technology will disrupt the oil and gas industries. You could see it here. I just wanted to talk about the fact that at the bottom paragraph, um, a partnership struck between Halliburton, Microsoft, and Accenture started 2020. For years, Halliburton was one of the world's largest oil field service companies and has been plagued by shrinking margins and chronic underperformance. The company eventually made a deal with two cloud giants to migrate its existing data centers to cloud and enhance its digital offerings. And it just goes on, okay? But we are seeing what all of these companies, no matter what industry they are, they're trying to take on some form of technology advancement there, as well as artificial intelligence. They're all asking, that's, what happen, that's what's happening right now in boardrooms today. They are asking themselves, how do we increase productivity? How do we bring in artificial intelligence? And they'll be sold products and services they probably don't need, but in some cases, um, it will be beneficial to them. And we can see part of that right here and now. Here is one thing that is going to rapidly change. As I said, I, I brought that new information up front. And now look at this. Money Manager's weekly net positions in Brent, WTI, US gasoline, US diesel, and Euro gas oil was down. So investors said, uh-oh, we got a recession. We got a banking crisis. Money's leaving there. But guess what? Production cuts, you might see that turn the other direction. Okay, a couple weeks in a row. It was down quite a bit. Banking crisis, right? Well, we'll see what happens. This is all about the SPR, Strategic Petroleum Reserve, in the United States. They depleted that, check this out, by 180 million barrels. And apparently it's going to take years to get it back there. Now, at what price? That's a big concern as well. So think about that. At what price are they going to be refilling it at? They sold it at a high price, great. Okay, but you got 180 million barrels. Are you going to be doing that at what Goldman Sachs and others say is going to be a much higher price? Well, that wouldn't be very good, would it? Now let's look at this next part. As we see what's happening in Europe, while we do see euro area inflation rate declining, core inflation, of course, what's core inflation? They take out all that quote unquote volatile stuff and it's still rising. You could look at this chart too. Euro area inflation components. So we break that down. Services, core goods, fat. Do you know what fat is? And energy. Okay, broken down. What is fat? Food, alcohol, tobacco. Okay, it's not fat because I ate too much pasta and my waistline is up like that chart as it shows you. No, uh, you can see it right here. Just going off the charts. And, you, you know, food prices had risen Considerably, I don't know what alcohol costs. I'm assuming alcohol is much more expensive than it was before. But anyway, you could see uh, in this case here that for the most part, energy has come down, no, no doubt, but it's still much more elevated than it was in prior years. So of course that has an impact on people. Next chapter in Europe's energy crisis, summer risks for gas. And of course, if you look at with LNG, natural gas, this is something that Europe needs to take care of immediately. They were highly dependent on Russia. They need to refill their supply during this summer when there's much less usage. This is how it happens. Wintertime, they get used a lot. But during the summer is when they fill up their reserves. If they don't do that, this winter, Europe is going to be in big trouble. We need to see what happens. I'll keep you updated on the developments. Hit subscribe. I'll bring that to you, okay? Gas demand recovery in Europe gathers pace as prices plunge. Netherlands, Spain, and France show gains in gas use in refining. They talk about that as well, okay? Of course, everything that's happening with Ukraine and so on has really disrupted a lot of uh, what was in the past. And then we got some information around the disruptions that have occurred in different parts of the world. OPEC oil output falls on Angola, Iraq outages. Iraqi oil shutdown worsens as Gulf Keystone cuts output. Um, you could see that around 400,000 barrels a day of Iraqi exports have stopped. And then we have this. Japan breaks with, and by the way, there was another one. I don't know if it was Kazakhstan or, or another country that I did see also had a major disruption. Japan breaks with U.S. allies, buys Russian oil at prices above 
a cap. This is funny because they put caps, they put all these processes in place, say everybody's got to follow them, sanction this, sanction that, and then they don't even, nobody follows it. Come on, it's a joke. This is all nothing but lip service. Citing energy needs Tokyo one exception to the rules binding G7 nation. Oh, we really need it though. Oh, okay, no problem. I mean, that's the way it goes. That's the way the um, situations work, okay? As long as they show face, oh, this is this is what we want to do. This is what we want. We want to be tough. We want to be tough. Oh, but there's a way around? Yeah. Okay, so watch what happens with oil production. we got to face the music that prices are going up. In Canada, look at that. They introduced yet another tax and gas prices went up per liter, another 10 cents. Okay, so let's say if it was a dollar fifty per liter, now dollar sixty per liter. That's a that's a big hit, and that doesn't go away if prices go down, right? So that's the kind of thing that uh, we'll see everywhere: higher taxes, dri uh, taxes per mile driven. All these different things are being implemented right now, and the whole goal, like if you're not aware of this, the whole goal is to keep people subdued so that they don't travel so that their carbon emissions are set to a certain level because if you drive this much well you've gone over your allotment and that will cost you you can do it but it'll cost you they're starting to measure that with different credit cards and uh you you know you get your credit card report in some uh, for some banks or some credit cards they list that right on there they list this is your your carbon emissions they're going towards that and uh whether you agree with this or not doesn't matter the point is they're going to use that to restrict people and it will be restrictive because it will cost you too much and that is hidden in a sense inflation um, it's going to be very expensive just to do basic things and they're doing so one step at a time if they go all the way it's going to be too far too quick people revolt but inch at a time boiling the frogs in the water make it happen look all these details can be worrisome, but we need to know the truth about what we can do. The Pillars of Prosperity are something that I talk about all the time. Search the Pillars of Prosperity, the money GPS. And don't forget to hit subscribe to the channel each and every day. I'll bring you the latest and greatest. Take care.